and we'll look at how to calculate the MPV and the IRR and MIRR in just a second. So just to reiterate about um, this first question, how is the net operating working capital recovered? So again, when a firm takes on this a new capital budgeting project, it typically must increase its investment in receivables and inventories over and above the increase in payables and accruals. Therefore, that increases its net operating working capital. Since this increase must be financed, it is included as an outflow in year zero for the analysis. At the end of the project's life, inventories are depleted and receivables are collected. Therefore, there's a decrease or reduction in net operating working capital, which represents an inflow in the final year of the project's life. So there is, for the next one, there's not always a tax on salvage value. So in this case, since we were making a profit, the book value is zero, and then we could sell it for 25000 That made us have to pay taxes. But if the salvage value um, had been 25000 and the book value had been 50000 then that means we would have been actually incurring a loss because it's worth 50000 but we could only sell it for 25000 So we would actually say 25000 minus 50000 and then we get you know, a negative 25000 and we would actually get a tax tax credit of 40% on that 25000 that we lost. And then is the tax on salvage value ever a positive cash flow? Well that's I guess that's what I was just talking about. So if you get a tax credit that is like a positive cash flow. So you may be wondering why didn't we include financing effects in the cash flows, like dividends and interest expense? Well, we should not revise our cash flows to show interest charges or dividend payments because the effects of debt financing um, are reflected in the cost of capital, which is the weighted average cost of capital, and that's used to discount the cash flows. If we included the interest charges, we would be doing we would be a double counting the cost of debt financing. And then dividends are paid um, out of retained earnings and you know whatever net income you get, you can put some back in retained earnings or you can put some back in or pay some out in, as dividends. So we don't include those. And then should a, a $50,000 improvement cost from the previous year be included in the analysis. Well, anything that's happened before the cash flows are going to start is considered a sunk cost and it doesn't shouldn't affect the decision and it shouldn't be included in the analysis. The only thing that we want to include in the analysis is from day zero, which is today, what are all the future cash flows that would occur. So just remember, sunk costs are never included. Now, what if we could lease the facility for $25,000 per year? Would this affect the analysis? Well, that type of a rental payment represents an opportunity cost. And because of that, we should include the after-tax amount. So what we would make, $25,000 times 1 minus the tax rate, which would give us $15,000. That $15,000 should be subtracted from the cash flows that the company would have otherwise received. So if it's something like an opportunity cost, we do have to make that an expense for the project. What if the new product line that they were going to sell decreases the sales of the firm's other lines? Would this affect the analysis? So, for example, what if they were selling um, dark chocolate peanut butter and then they offered a white chocolate peanut butter? And this is speaking from experience because the peanut butter company has both of those and they're really good. But what if they had just started to offer the white chocolate peanut butter and now people that like the dark chocolate really like the white chocolate peanut butter better? So, yes, this should be considered because it's considered an external. Externality. And so whatever 
decrease in sales for the new product, say it's the white chocolate peanut butter, or I'm sorry, the dark chocolate peanut butter, whatever decrease in sales that's caused for that should be expensed um, in the consideration for offering the new line of the white chocolate peanut butter. So the externalities that we talk about where the sale of one product affects the sale of another product, it can be negative where the example that I was talking about where people stop buying the dark chocolate peanut butter as much or they could be positive because what if they sold um, instead of a new type of peanut butter they sold a new type of jelly and so a dark chocolate peanut butter with some special kind of jelly that goes with that then it could increase the sales of both of them and that would be a positive externality and they're called like complements. So here's all the numbers that we have that we came up with by going through that long process where we had the initial cost and all of the operating cash flows and then the final cash flow included the in, the return of net operating working capital and the um, after-tax salvage value. So just remember that all of those were included. I remember in this original negative 260 we had the cost of the machine and the installation or I they may have called it equipment and then we also had the charge of the increase in net operating working capital. And so if we input this into our calculator as cash flows So let's take a look at that. Okay, so let's go to the cash flow register and hit second clear work. And I'll put in my first cash flow of 260 negative and enter and go down. Cash flow one, 79.7 and enter and down 91.2, enter, down. 62.4 enter and I'll go down cash flow 4 is 89.7 and then the first thing I could calculate is the net present value so NPV if the weighted average cost of capital is 10 I enter that and I go down and I hit compute and I get negative 4.03 so that would mean that we should reject the project based on getting a negative net present value. If I went to IRR and hit compute, I get 9.3%. And 9.3 is less than 10%, so I would reject based on um, IRR. And then you could go through the Excel and calculate the MIRR and you would find that you get 9.6 which is still less than 10 percent so so far we have three rejects and then the payback um, from chapter 11 if you remember how to calculate that they got 3.3 years and I don't know what their rule might have been on payback it could have been that it must have a payback of two years or less and so this would have been rejected so so far it looks like a project that we should not um, should not go into. The next question is if this were a replacement rather than a new project would the analysis change? And yes it would. In a replacement analysis we need to find differences in cash flows. So for example the cash flows that would exist if we take on the project versus the cash flows that would exist if we did not. In the table, there would need to be for each year a column for no change, a column for the new project, and a column for the difference. The difference column is the one that would be used to obtain the net present va value, IRR, multiple IRR, or I'm sorry, modified IRR, and payback.